The political news cycle has been a lot this year, but amidst all the chaos, we're happy to share that there is a sliver of good news for us in the skincare industry, and that is a new sunscreen bill has actually just been passed. So we are incredibly honored that today we are going to be joined by Senator Hassan from the HELP Committee, and that is the Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee to give us an inside scoop. Let's go. Awesome. Um, so to start, thank you so much for joining yes. us. We just sure. really well, we just really want to ask you, so why did the HELP Committee decide to work on the sunscreen issue in the U.S.? Well, so first of all, thanks for having me on. And we all know how important sunscreen is, right? Uh, we know it's critically important to protect our skin, uh, to prevent skin cancer in particular. And um, the U.S. has been way behind the rest of the world now for decades, decades. really, yes. about the ingredients we use in our sunscreen, which means it's, you know, older ingredients um, that it's not as comfortable to use for a lot of people. And in the rest of the world, uh, there are many more options available. So as we began to get outreach from people saying, why don't we have the same kind of options for sunscreen in the United States that other people have in other parts of the world? Congressman Joyce, who's a dermatologist, began looking at this issue and got the bill passed uh, over in the House. And then it came to the Senate. And I teamed up with Roger Marshall, who's also a medical doctor. Uh, and we really thought it was an important bill to push forward because Americans should have the same kind of options for sunscreen as other folks do. I just want to say we've been working in the industry for oh, many years now. And it's to a point that we hear about maybe there's a change. And it's at a point now where even Gloria and I sometimes will hear news and we're like, I don't believe it. I still don't believe it. I'm not going to believe it until I see it. So right. it's just really awesome to to hear this news coming from you. Yeah, we've well, been duped so many times. So we and in the industry, we've been talking about hearing buzzes of changes maybe coming. Right. So, you know, how long have this bill been, you know, on the docket? How long have everyone been working on this? Well, as you both reference, um, people have been raising concerns about sunscreen availability in the United States and and modernize the need to modernize sunscreen um, and have more options for folks for a long time. Uh, I think I, I really give credit to Representative Joyce because obviously as a dermatologist, he knew a lot about this. We got a lot of outreach and I think the timing was just right. You know, finally, folks like the two of you, uh, people who want more options, who understand how important having really usable skin care and sunscreen, how important that really is, um, really pushed. And um, what we've been able to do here with this bill is change the way the FDA will approve new sunscreen products and new filters. And so um, it's exciting. Uh, they've got about a year to change their rules, but I think this really opens up a whole new kind of era for us in terms of the sunscreen Americans can use. Yeah. And you mentioned um, Senator Joyce, who's a dermatologist. I'm wondering who else in the industry or other experts have, have you guys talked to in drafting this bill? Well, you know, one of the things we did as the bill came over and, you know, we always go through a process when we are considering whether to sponsor a bill mm -hmm. is um, my team met with a lot of uh, different folks from the industry, uh, obviously uh, scientists, and really were drilling down on what the barriers to new sunscreen products mm -hmm. is have been in the United States, right? And it really comes down to the fact that we weren't allowing manufacturers of sunscreen to rely on real world evidence mm -hmm. that they were collecting uh, from the use of their sunscreen in other parts of the world. And uh, as we really drilled down on how we could make changes to the FDA process so that manufacturers would have the opportunity uh, to develop new products without having to go through really, really rigorous animal testing, clinical testing, yeah. when there was very good evidence from other parts of the world about the safety of these products. Um, that's really what these changes are about. It's an exciting development, and it was something I didn't know much about until uh, people like you brought it forward and, and we heard from more and more consumers. So you've kind of already are alluding to our next realm of topic that we want to get into is just the actual impact of the bill. Right. What is the most significant change or improvement the bill is hoping to achieve with this reform of the right. sunscreen approval process? Yeah. So when you think about how 
new products come to market. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to think through the financial incentives for any business to decide that they want to invest in developing a new product. Uh, they may already have other products with older ingredients uh, on the market. Those products may be selling well. So what's in it for the company if they have to go through a very expensive set of testing before they can get a product to market, right? And this is especially true for businesses that are selling that product, making that product and selling it in other parts of the world, right? They've already got it approved in other parts of the world. You have to make it attractive enough for them to develop, manufacture, and sell in the United States too. As we began um, investigating the barriers uh, to this production of new products, what we discovered was just the United States process uh, that the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration oversees, was really expensive and time consuming. And so yeah. as we began, you know, and this is where, you know, Congressman Joyce's experience was so important, right? Because as we began understanding what evidence there already was from the use of these kinds of filters in other parts of the world, um, we began to see ways we could reform the process so that businesses have an incentive to develop these products and sell them here. So that all sounds amazing. Um, I guess in terms of concrete step, next steps, yeah. what happens next? What happens now? Uh, well, what happens now is the bill's been signed into law. It gives the FDA a year to change its processes. But what the FDA now has is a year to change its processes and then really finalize new rules so that manufacturers, uh, the developers of these new sunscreens can actually uh, use the real world evidence they have from other parts of the world, observational studies, uh, real world evidence, no requirements for animal testing, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, they have a year to update their rules. And so uh, after that year is up, uh, then we should see um, developers of these products um, beginning to produce them here. Uh, it also should mean that businesses from other parts of the world may be able to just sell them here, uh, even if they don't make them here. Yes, we hear we hear about the struggles of finding good Asian sunscreen in the yeah. States from a lot of our followers. They now have to rely on people who the friends who travel and want not to have access to these so it's pretty exciting to hear that we might have it here again soon yeah yeah in terms of like uh, coming from the consumer side if they're you know uh, hearing this news uh is there anything they can do to um just i don't know show their support or you know in a way uh check in on this the progress of everything um because we definitely have some very passionate sunscreen users and even just like parents who want their kids or, or just uh, want their families to have just better sunscreen protection. What can they do, you know, feeling this like renewed energy around sunscreen awareness? Yeah, well, you know, um, whenever there are changes like this, um, as I said, the law gives the FDA a year to update its rules and guidance. Um, but sometimes that time can slip because the yes. FDA, like any other organization, <laughs> yes. is a busy place. Yeah. So I think it's really important for people uh, to stay informed. Uh, they can do that a couple of ways. There's a site called skincancer.org, which is mm -hmm. tracking the progress here. And we'll have more information about what the FDA is doing. The FDA also will uh, sometimes have public meetings or announce that it's having meetings or going through some sort of review process mm -hmm. of these new regulations. So people should follow that. Um, I know YouTube will follow it and, and keep folks informed. Um, my website, which is hassan.senate.gov, uh, has some information about this as well. But look, the reason that this change happened in the States is that consumers were really outspoken about it, um, talked, I am sure, I'm sure Representative Joyce heard from patients of his during his time practicing dermatology that they were frustrated with the lack of options for them, right? And so I think just important for people to watch what the FDA is doing and know that writing letters to the FDA or writing emails to them, keeping in touch with um, senators and congressmen who sponsored this legislation, all of that just allows us to 
keep checking in with the FDA, right? And saying, hey, how's it coming? Uh, what progress are you making? I also think the industry will be watching what the FDA is doing closely because, of course, they want to be able to sell new products here. Very much so. And I think you kind of touch on a key point that we always like try to champion is that we've seen through consumer action, real change in the industry. Yeah. Um, in fact, just in the past few years, like just the the need for more transparency, the need for better, like it's all had an impact. And so I, it's exactly as you voice, it's like, you know, your the, the consumer's action, those who are passionate, it's like, yeah, that it, it does make a meaningful difference, even though it's it's feels so far removed. So right, um, yeah, and and I think it you know it's a reminder to people that we're a big country. We've got yeah. state governments and local governments and federal government, and it all can kind of seem abstract and to your point far away. But really, when you keep at it and when you articulate in terms of your own life why something makes a difference to you, why you care about it so much, mm -hmm. and give suggestions of what could change. Um, that's the way we get good legislation across the finish line, you know, and mm -hmm. we really need to hear from people about their personal experiences and mm -hmm. what a difference new laws or changes in laws could make for them. And that's what happened here. You know, there are a lot of people who didn't realize that the sunscreen they've always used isn't necessarily the best they could get. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important. I certainly didn't realize it until this bill came along. Uh, and then one of my daughter's friends uh, was one of the people following this bill. And she said, I can't believe you did that. And I was like, yeah. I didn't know it was an issue, right? So yeah. um, I think it's really important for people to speak up. So we have one final question that is outside of the list we provided, but it's serendipitous timing that the FDA actually today just publicly shared a statement that they are now opening or looking recommending into, yeah, EMT. Yeah, a new filter uh, yeah. to be looked at. And um, yeah, I didn't know if you, you had any comments. We'd love to share anything on that side, on your end, on that work. Yeah. Well, um, we just saw that news pop, yeah. too. So yeah. I'm still learning a little bit more about the details. But I will say this really does reflect the success of this effort um, cool. by consumers, by voters to say uh -huh. uh, we really need some new filters and some new options and we shouldn't be settling for skincare products, uh, cancer prevention products that haven't been updated or modernized for decades. Um, you know, we should be innovating all the time. And that's really what all of your viewers and you and so many other people have, have really done. You've made a difference. And it's an exciting day to know that uh, that news popped uh, just as we're talking about this bill. <laughs> yep. So, well, thank you so much yeah, for your time. We are so grateful for your time. It's been so nice speaking with you. It's yeah. really been nice to to speak with both of you, and I yeah. look forward to hearing more about you and from you. Thanks. Awesome. Take Thanks. care now. Okay, that was a lot of really exciting news, but what's the takeaway here? And we'll be honest, we are jaded chemists who have been in the industry for some time. Truth. So, been like, yarn too many times. <laughs> yep, I feel like we've been so desensitized by it. We don't believe we won't believe it until we see it. But after all that talk. I think we can be cautiously optimistic. Yep. And then pair that with literally today's FDA's public comment that was released um, about um, proposing BEMT. Um, it does feel like the trained, um, yeah, the modernizing sunscreen for the U.S., it's, it's, it's starting to move now. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, the question that you guys will all have for us is, okay, where, when, why will we get new products? Will we be able to import Asian sunscreens? I think, generally speaking, it will still take some time. Yeah. We need more clarity mm -hmm. on everything. Um, like Senator Hassan shared, uh, it will take about a year for things like regulatory testing protocol, general FDA clearance on these new filters uh, to really sort itself out and um yeah, and just give provide us with more information on what's coming down the pipeline for new sunscreens. But generally speaking, we are just really excited to hear and to learn that there are these committees yeah. working on these problems. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes it can feel like the FDA is a mysterious blo uh, black box. They might either hear us, <laughs> but clearly things are moving and they they can see the consumer sentiments and the demand for better sunscreen. 
So we have all that to look forward to. Yeah. And you guys still have us. We will be doing our best to keep you informed on timing, updates, you know, what are the next steps. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is sunscreens are challenging to create, validate, and go to work to protect our skin from harmful UV rays. Even with these new filters, those challenges, they get easier, but they still remain. And it's important that this is going to bring us out of the Stone Ages, yes, but we still follow all the right steps to ensure that the sunscreens we continue to produce really do live up to its claims, its labels, its protection. Yep, so that's it for now. Let us know if you have any questions or follow-up or if you want to let Senator Hassan know that you appreciate all the work that the committee is doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye!